Hey and welcome to a new video. Today we will talk about the GTX 1080 Ti power modding. As promised in the last video, we will apply some liquid metal compound on the three shunt resistors of this card and I will do some testing what the benefits of the power mods are. As you can see, I already removed the cooler from my card and the power mod works as on any latest NVIDIA card. So we have um, one IC that is measuring the power consumption of the whole card, adding up the power consumption of the 6-pin, 8-pin and PCI Express connector. That's why we have three shunt resistors and there is one small IC that is adding up those three um, input sources together and makes sure that on stock, the power consumption of the whole card is not above 250 watt. And if we do some modifications like we did in the last video, where we used MSI Afterburner and increased the power target to 120%, then um, the card can consume up to 300 watt. So even with 120% uh, and 300 watt power consumption, this is still not enough because you can see if you analyze the frequency uh, over the time in a benchmark that the frequency is still not stable and you're still limited by the power consumption if you check it in GPUC. That's why we will do the power mod and see what the real benefits are. To do the power mod, I'm using liquid metal in detail, the thermal grizzly conductor node. And talking about liquid metal compounds, I want to point out something I read on several forums online. So apparently some users reported that the liquid metal ate up the solder around the shunt resistors and the shunt resistors fell off the card. I'm pretty sure that this is possible because the liquid metal, even this one, contains tin. So I think it's possible that some of the liquid metal compounds can eat up the solder of the shunt resistors. Personally, I never had this. I had some overclockers reporting this stuff to me and even showed me some pictures. So I'm sure this exists. I'm just not sure why and why this happens. Um, if you apply the liquid metal, just make sure that you only cover the middle part of the shunt resistor and just short the shunt resistor and make sure that it's not touching the soldering tin of the shunt resistors and then I'm pretty sure it should be fine. One more thing I would like to talk about before we do the power mod is uh, the life expectancy of the card. So there was one guy talking on the German video and asking a question about how does it um, influence the life expectancy of the card if you do the power mod. Because recently there was an article from an NVIDIA, I think it's technical marketing director, who pointed out that if you push the voltage to the maximum, which is 1.075 volt, that the life expectancy of the card is only one year. And I think that's completely over exaggerated. I'm really not sure how it comes to that con conclusion because if it would be one year, then by the time now we would already see a lot of that normal GTX 1080s. The normal 1080 is already out for almost one year and I'm pretty sure there are a lot of enthusiasts out there who did power mods on their card, who pushed their, their cards to the limit, to the maximum and if he says that 100% of the cards die within one year that would mean that we would already see a lot of dead cards by now so I'm pretty sure that's not true. For sure um, the life expectancy of the card will be lower with this but I'm pretty sure it's not going from like five years to one year it's maybe from five years to three years, I think that's more, um, more realistic. So I will now apply the liquid metal to the card and then we will test the benefits of this mod. All right, so we are back and I already applied the thermal grizzly conductor node on the shunt resistors. So I applied the liquid metal to all three shunt resistors and so far it worked out quite well for me, even though I'm using the founders edition with a stock cooler, especially considering how high the power consumption is after doing the power mod. So running the card stock, my whole setup um, consumed about 396 watt of power and after overclocking the card without doing the power mod, the whole system consumed about 450 watt and applying the power mod and doing the maximum overclock, so overclocking GPU uh, and memory, also adjusting the fan, uh, yeah, we have a little bit over 500 watt power consumption, so that's actually quite heavy and a lot for the stock cooler and I'm a little bit concerned that it might be too much for the VRMs using the stock cooler. So personally I would only recommend to do this uh, if you use a custom water block and in that, in that case it should be perfectly fine because the custom water block will be very good for the VRMs, it will keep them very cold and especially the power consumption and the temperature of the GPU is really no problem. So in the last video we used the Unigine Silver Position benchmark and we hit around 9800 points 
at maximum OC, so we overclocked the GPU, memory, adjusted the fan curve and also did plus 20% in a power target. So after having the same settings again, but applying the liquid metal to the shunt resistors, we ended up with 9968 points, which is around 200 points more than before. Um, just by applying the power mod and that's actually not bad but considering that the card is a, uh, is consuming five, uh, 50 watts more that's actually quite yeah quite heavy and not that efficient but let's take a look at the card in detail so here you can see a chart of the card running uh, with a max OC um, with a GPU OC memory OC plus 20 percent power target and a custom fan curve but without power mod so you can see the GPU temperature is black and it starts around 45 degrees Celsius and it's going up to around 65, 68 degrees Celsius under load and the fan speed will go up quite, quite quickly and will end up at around 85 to 90% max under load. The gray curve is a VDDC, so that's the GPU voltage and you can see on the right vertical axis, you can see that it's around one volt. Sometimes it drops a little bit below one volt, so it's like 0.98 volts, something like this. And then in between you have spots in the benchmark where it hits around 1.06 volt, something in this direction. Um, but it's definitely not stable um, uh, through the whole benchmark run. And we can also see the power consumption is usually between 110 and 120% and obviously whenever the, the card hits a power consumption of 120% it will lower either uh, GPU voltage or GPU clock or both to maintain um, the card uh, to stay in the power limit of maximum 120%. And that's what we can see also if we take a look at the GPU core clock you can see that the card is usually running uh, between 1950 and 2000 megahertz and you can see it's usually going like this and you have a quite big fluctuation. So now we will take a look at the same chart but using the power mods you can already see a big change in uh, the fan speed so looking at the fan speed you can see it's the same curve but the fan quickly hits 100% through the whole benchmark and obviously the card is quite loud then using the stock cooler and the GPU temperature is not that bad because the card is running at 100% fan speed so it's still below 70 degrees Celsius, Celsius which is perfectly fine for the GPU itself but I guess that the VRMs will be quite hot. Looking at the gray curve again which is the VDDC you can see that the voltage is surprisingly stable so it's always above 1 volt so you have around 1.06 1.07 volt which should be the maximum for this card and it seems like the card is always staying stable at this level so that's actually quite cool. You can also see how much the power consumption changed so that's obviously only the measured power consumption so that's obviously wrong because that's what we did with the power mod so you can see it's usually at around 100 percent sometimes peaking up to almost 110 percent in between also dropping down to almost 90 so that's actually working very very well and obviously at not a single point the card is limited by the power consumption now finally let's take a look at the gpu core clock and that's what we want to see so the card you remember from before that the card was fluctuating always between 1950 and 2000 megahertz and now you can see that the card is running extremely stable it's boosting a little bit higher at the beginning but then stays stable at always 2000 megahertz and in the end it drops a little bit down maybe to 1980 something in this direction but it's always stable and that's exactly what we want to achieve with the power mod so the conclusion is that the power mod works very well, but um, as I said before, I do not recommend to do this with a stock cooler because I think it's, it's still fine for the GPU temperature wise, but it could be too much for the VRM. So I don't want to be responsible for uh, your car blowing up. So I only recommend doing this if you have a custom water block that keeps the VRMs cold, memory cold, and also the GPU cold. What's also very interesting is there is a topic at overclock.net that's uh, very interesting um, if you want to read more about the power modding. So uh, one guy pointed me to this and um, it seems um, that it's possible to flash the ASUS 1080 Ti Strix BIOS to the 1080, 1080 Ti Founders Edition which should be okay because both are using the, using the same voltage controller so that's not an issue and it seems that that guy did it successfully the flash and it worked so he could increase the power consumption and also had a GPU voltage of 1.2 volt which was quite impressive 
Um, not sure if that's good for a founder's edition to do that, especially if you run the stock cooler. I think that guy did that. So um, not sure if I would recommend that, but it's, uh, it's very interesting to see that it actually works to flash the BIOS for this card. So if you already have a 1080 Ti Strix from ASUS, obviously you can just go for the extra C BIOS. You don't have to do any um, physical power modding. So that's quite cool. And I think also other vendors like uh, Galax with the Hall of Fame card and probably also EVGA with the Kingpin card. I think that card will be out soon. Um, should have some decent BIOS where you have no no power mods, uh, no power limitations, so you don't have to do any power modding. That's obviously an option you can do. Otherwise, um, I found also in that topic that people tried uh, to glue on some small resistors onto capacitors of um, the Texas Instruments controller that's measuring the power consumption. Um, this is referring to the guide from TIN from EVGA who posted on XDEVs about the 1080 Ti power modding. That's actually a more elegant way to do the power mod, but it also requires maybe either soldering or you have to be really good with a, um, with a silver conductive paint and also you have to buy the resistors first. So that's also a way of doing it, but it takes a little bit more effort than doing the, just the liquid metal modding. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions, leave comments down below. Otherwise, I hope you have a very nice weekend and see you soon.